Hey guys, let's do mission 9 of the crew campaign. So our briefing here is Tarasov and Anastasia meeting in the morning in the dining room. Anastasia is trying to convince Dima to star in another documentary that she wants to plan or wants to do about his time at war at the Black Sea, and she wants to call it A Hero's Memory. Just then, uh, Andrew interrupts the conversation, walks in, and uh, says that Pomanov is talking about fuel quality, didn't like something, and we need to go check it out. So I guess that's what our mission's going to be for. Uh, our task is to transport cargo using an external sling. Oh boy. All right, we got more of that. Um, from Solnechnaya to an oil platform. Okay, so we're doing basically the same thing as last time. And then transport a passenger from Smotrovaya to the Solnechnaya station. So it sounds like another triangle. Um, I, yeah, very, actually sounds very similar to the last mission. Uh, same thing, average speed with cargo 130 without 190, average flight duration 60 minutes. We've got our emergency frequencies for the ARC UD, channel 3 and 5. Probably 3 is what we'd want to use. Uh, take off from Solnechnaya, and then we head out to um, this oil rig, and then Smotrovaya, and then back to Solnechnaya. Okay. There's a look at our flight plans. So we're starting here. Uh, we're heading out to sea and then south this time, and then back up north where we started. So last time we went. Uh, northwest and then back over here to the east and then down. So this time it's kind of a mirrored triangle. Um, and then the last one here is our cargo site, so we're picking up cargo from the same place. So should be interesting. I wonder what'll be different about it. All right, let's get going. Check is complete. Flight manuals on board checked. Latches, doors, hatches closed. Перезарядка по плану. Командир, нет возможности. Altimeters are checked. Pressure and ADA for the altimeters are checked. Refueling is 715 kilos. Takeoff weight is 8,600 kilograms. That's not a lot of weight and not a lot of fuel. The reports are accepted. Helicopter has been pre-flight checked. No anomalies. There are no passengers on board. Airport frequency is 126. Flight engineer, start, please. Got it. Starting. The outside temperature is 24 degrees below zero. Doubt. Switch on the engine anti-ice system, pedostatic system, and batteries, please. Wait, which way is our wind going? Right to left? So yeah, we want to start our left engine first. Let's close the door. It's apparently minus 24 out there, which is very cold, by the way. On 126. And we should be requesting startup. If I remember just a couple of missions ago, I forgot to request takeoff before I left. So this time we're going to try to remember to request takeoff before we go anywhere. Left engine's up and running-ish. Let's get the right engine going. Oh yeah, looks good. The right engine is running. The temperature is rising. Right engines starting. Rectifiers one, two, three, generators one and two, and this time turn off the APU.
because I'm yawing because my pedals are turned a little. Alright. Um, that starts free heat. Triangle panels. Get to nagging Natasha later. Center channel autopilot. Torque 9 frequency is 735 kilohertz. UDN G3. There's still no weekend on the station. Despite the run, I think there's a stall one. That's not too far to fly there. Send the NDB to Solnitschnaya station. Got it. NDB Solnitschnaya is 705 kilohertz. Okay, both of those are set. There, take the heater off priming. Heading 265. Distance to platform 14.7 kilometers. Oops. Uh, yeah, we'll do this first. 14.7, and then heading is 265. Takeoff heading 190. Ready for takeoff. Andre, check if system heat is on, please. Ready for takeoff. Ready. Ready for takeoff? Ready. Ready for All right. takeoff, ready. 190, hey? Okay, so this is something I've been doing in these missions or in missions in general recently is because I'm flying both seats myself, I basically have two of these that I can use with course select. So for one of them, I'm going to set it to 190, which is um, my takeoff and landing heading into the wind. The other one I'm going to set to my actual desired course, which in this case is here. This way, since I'm doing most of my en route flying from the right seat, and then I'm switching to the left seat for landing and takeoff, this gives me a quick reference for which way should I be pointing when I'm landing and taking off. Uh, it's definitely not real procedure, I'm sure, but it uh, it helps me with having to remember which way the wind is coming from, especially in missions where, like, in these ones they tell me, but in missions where they don't, it's nice to know. Alright, I think that is everything we need to have running. Got controls indicator there. I'll do a quick once over here, make sure we've got all of our power set right, got our lights and everything, triangle panel, radio, radio volume can come up. Arc 9 is set. APU is off. Anti-icing is on. No weapons. Lights are on. I think we are all set. We'll just turn up the R863 volume here. That should about do it. Alright, so we're going to go pick up some cargo. Uh, hopefully I still have that bound. We go into radio menu F6 for all cargoes, and there's that one, 43, 50 kilograms. So our weight was like 80-something, 80 80-some 80 hundred. But it was below 9,000 anyway. Um, that puts us awfully close to the recommended max weight of this helicopter of around 13,000 kilograms, plus we are, we have the anti-icing on, which is going to sap a ton of power from the engine, so this is going to be a somewhat difficult lift, probably. Hey everyone, future me here. So a couple of things before we get started on this mission. So as you might be able to tell from this clip and from the clouds in the actual mission, this was recorded a while ago. This was recorded on 2.5.6 prior to the 2.7 patch with the new clouds and weather and everything. So I don't necessarily know what the weather would look like if you were to go back and fly this mission today. I don't know if they've updated it or not. I don't know if it works the same way, if the weather is similar. Just keep in mind you're seeing what the old weather looked like on 2.5.6, not on 2.7. The other one is that there was a bug affecting this version of DCS where basically any sling load cargo under the hip has no weight. So you could be in an overloaded helicopter exceeding the maximum rated takeoff weight like we are in this clip right here. And you could be trying to pick up a 5,000 kilogram object 
like the one in front of us, and the helicopter would just pick it up, no problem, and fly away like there was nothing there. Like, it had no weight at all. No struggle, no difficulties, nothing, just up and away. This also causes some weird interactions with physics, where the cargo will start to swing around all by itself and will never stop, even in a stable hover. Uh, where the line will snap, where the cargo looks like it's floating or flapping out behind you like a flag. Very odd behaviors that make it pretty frustrating because once the cargo starts to move around and swing, it's very hard to arrest that motion to get it to stop again. Especially if the line is snapping for no fault of your own. So you're going to see at least some of that in this mission, where the cargo doesn't weigh anything, and I don't believe that's the way this mission is supposed to play out. It's supposed to be fairly challenging, as far as I understand, to pick up the cargo, but it just isn't. I got lucky. You'll see that the cargo behaved itself relatively well for me. I didn't have the issues of the line snapping or flapping around behind me, but still an issue. Now the real kicker for this is that this was supposed to be solved... I don't know, this was reported in December of 2020. And I figured that, you know, if I took long enough to get around to editing this, maybe I could go back and refly the mission with the fix in place and see how it's supposed to go. But here we are in June, a full six months later, and it's still an issue. You know, as of June 7th, when I'm recording this, it's still a problem. Uh, and I don't know how long it's going to take for them to fix it. So my understanding is that the entire HIP team, the Belsim Tech guys, are all working on the hind. They're just all doing that. And once the hind comes out, maybe then they'll have some time to come back and revisit the hip. I know there's been talk of bringing multi-crew to it. Maybe at that point, they'll start to look at bugs like this one that have been reported for months and months. But in the meantime, it basically means that sling loading in this helicopter isn't really enjoyable. It is a rather frustrating experience. Um, and I wouldn't recommend it right now. So it's been pretty disappointing that this bug's been around for as long as it has. But, you know, hopefully they'll get to it soon. So, anyway, those are the two things you need to know for this mission. Um, let's get back to it. Enjoy. Alright, let's select the cargo. Break off. Oh, I should have trimmed first. There, all right, we're going to point ourselves into the wind. Yeah, and see, now I have that nice course select, which tells me this is the direction to be facing for the wind, so I find that pretty handy. And then just two-stage pull-up. Ooh, yeah, there's a lot of wind. We're up already, so that might be our saving grace here for the cargo. The wind is so strong that... You just lift right up. Plus, we're at 30% fuel, so you know, we're super light. Um, yeah, we're almost at ETL here. Like you can see the shaking from transverse flow, and we're not even going anywhere. So, I guess that might be the idea. Is yeah, we're lifting really heavy cargo, but we don't have to use quite as much power to hover because the wind is so strong. So, it should boost our maximum takeoff weight. Engine looks okay so far. I gotta make, I gotta rebind that trim hat. Kind of an uncomfortable little air taxi over here, hey? But I want to just like keep myself pointed into the wind and just kind of shuffle over to where I'm supposed to be. Now I should have, if things are bound right, yeah, they're not. I need to rebind my sling controls, give me a moment. I see Esk, Kataro, and Pigup. Alright, there we go. Now I have my overlay for cargo. Alright, so like we're in the air at 2 degrees of collective here, that's pretty crazy. Normal takeoff is like 5 to 7. Heavy takeoff at 9 or 10. This good trim is going to be key here. Bring ourselves down 
partway to altitude. Just keep that thing right in front of us. I'm focusing on that smoke stack, kind of dead ahead as my reference point for my hover. And I just want to keep that thing right in front of me. And that should give me an idea of whether I'm drifting or sinking or whatever. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Cargo unhooked. Well, we got an issue. Uh, yeah, we've got no oil pressure. Um, I don't think I can repair, but uh, we're going to go back to that landing pad here. And see if we can because um yeah i think at this point in a real mission if i were a pilot who discovered that i had no oil pressure all of a sudden i probably wouldn't be too keen on picking up some pretty heavy pipes and flying off into a snowstorm with them would i So let's bring it back over here. Um, yeah, this would be a downed helicopter now. This would be down for repairs. And we would either be flying the mission in something else or not flying the mission. Or maybe I'm wrong and maybe in Russia they just fly the mission anyway. We're gonna put it down. All right, and we're gonna shut it all down and request repair. So um, yeah, let's let's do that because we've got chip main gearbox and we've got main gearbox temperature looks fine. Uh, the oil pressure though is low, and that was okay earlier when we checked. So well, let's shut it all down. Failure of the right engine. Commander, if we survive, <laughs> I'll never fly with you again. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I did anything to cause the main gearbox chip. But my guess is that's a scripted thing that I'm probably not supposed to notice until I'm well on my way. It's probably just set up for a timer, and I'm a lot slower than whoever was testing this. Or for once in my life paying enough attention to catch something like that. Okay. Ground crew. Oh, I guess they're probably going to want the power off as well, hey? Well, let's see. Okay, fair enough. Let's turn down both of those. Try it again. Okay. Now, will they do it? Nope. I've never understood why... ...repair doesn't work half the time. Why the ground crew can say, okay, and then not repair me. Where is the veto this mission because I know it's unsafe? <laughs> All right, then. Start her back up. Okay, um, let's go ATC and do the thing that we forgot to do. Ветер у земли 
Okay, this time I've actually requested takeoff. Uh, everything is set except for icing. Okay, that's good. Let's get our cargoes. Select that one again. And throw on the seat. There. Okay, um... Let's go. Just over two degrees of collective. It wasn't that heavy at all. It just kind of went straight up. Have a look from outside. Well, let's uh, move out of the way of that radio tower and get going. We're going to jump over to the right-hand seat where we're going to do most of our flying. Get out of here, get ourselves turned to the right direction. Osrika, Romeo Alpha, 22845, we have secured the cargo. Setting the route, heading 265, departing your area in three minutes. Copy that. Perpendicular to it. <laughs> you should fly sport flying since so it's forbidden to take passengers. In other words, your flying sucks so much. I'm going too fast. There, that's a better speed. We need to climb quite a bit. Wow, that cargo's swinging around quite a bit in that mirror. It's, um, oh, there we go. Well, let's get ourselves not drifting so much first. There. Oh boy. Nope. That's too much slowing down. Now we need to climb. Oh, you know what? Radar altimeter is saying we're already there, so pressure altimeter must be set wrong. So we're at 300 right now. There. Yeah, that's a little better. Let's come back down, try to keep that speed lower. That car goes all over the place. Actually, it's not so bad. Given the wind? Ooh, I don't want that. I don't want to be up in the clouds. Oh, there we go. Oh, 
Ugh, crap. I trimmed and I lost cyclic authority until I recentered. Downside of the center trim mode. Okay, there's a better altitude. Better speed. Turn that nose down a little. Trying to keep that speed around 100. There's a lot going on, and I'm definitely getting some uh, task saturation right about now. Trying to fly a good course at a good altitude, at a good speed, minimal drift. All with pipes and a known failing engine. Alright. Altitude's okay. Speed's okay. Drift is okay. So it's about six kilometers to go on the Doppler. Turn just a little. There we go. I can see right down there. It's one of those. Alright, we're going to be landing on 190, so we've got to come out to the right of these things and then come in to the left. Looks like it's going to be the one dead ahead here. Still a little high. Pressure altimeter should be raised until it reads about the same. Speed up. For UTMG three, that gas is a frequency of one hundred and twenty five megahertz. One twenty five. Got it. One twenty five megahertz contacting. F five. Oh, I don't have the uh, easy comms on anymore. I'm just trying them all. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> One of them's giving me the okay. Yeah, 
Roger. I'll clarify the landmark. A platform with two towers. Put the cargo in the takeoff platform. My condition is good, sir. Copy that. Copy that. What's the weather update? With two towers. Wind gust of 5 to 8 miles per hour. The platform is clear. The barometer indicates 772 millimeters HG. Copy weather pressure 772 on our way. I'm just going to follow the needle in. I think it's that one back there. Because there's two of them here with two, two towers. Anyway, this is generally the heading we want to be on anyway for our landing. Kind of pointing in a little more towards the towers. Works out well. But yeah, like there's totally two of these here with two towers. Seems to be the one it's pointing at. Alright, so we're slowing. We're going to transition to hover well in advance and get ourselves trimmed again. There. Try not to climb too much. Really don't need a lot of power right now. And then we're going to move ahead. Try to keep that altitude just below 100, maybe lower it to 80. Let's see. Cargo release at 60. Engines are still okay, other than the low pressure. Slow that uh, forward movement a little. Yeah, basically just ride it forward now. try to do this a little more controlled than I have in the past. Trim. Okay. So there I can see where it is. It's right in front of me. We're going to pull up next to these towers. And then we're going to start lowering it down. Side. Oh yeah, okay. Alright, so we can come down then. Now, what if I go like this?
cargo unhooked. Okay, let's back it up and have a look. That was sketchy. Roger, secure the cable. Our call sign is got from Avio, Romeo Alpha 228. The hover was not that great. Copy that, gas from Avia 22845, cable is 15 meters long. Commander, heading to the turning point. Oh, One looks good. One four eight twenty four point nine. I'm gonna pause it here and grab a screenshot. All right, so we've got to go one four eight for uh, twenty four point nine. So I can do one four eight there. Now the thing is, I've also got to do that while flying. hover before I try to do this. Okay, let's go. Pick up some speed. Engine still seems okay, other than that no oil pressure. So at some point it's going to overheat. And one of them is going to catch fire. Or just fail and shut down. Now, is that going to match with this? No, that's not. There's no, uh, no radio beacon for the second one. We'll leave it on for now. But fly the course. Just go with the Doppler. Visual, eh? Contact tower? Okay. Um, I think we're one three zero, right? Maybe. Commander, it's time to report to the duty control. One one three zero. Still have 19 kilometers to go. Not much. We're good. Everyone 
Still seem to be okay. Engines are all right. No changes other than that. Uh, engine temps are warm, but like nothing to be too alarmed about yet. I don't think. Well, they got to come right a little bit. Visibility is, uh, ooh, we're getting too close to that cloud layer. It's not great. <laughs> That's for sure. I can see. But yeah, not great. Still 12 kilometers to our turning point, and then I guess we'll turn and head out to sea again to land on another, uh, Rig. Yeah, okay, we're gonna go across the other end. I see. Interesting. Oh, we're going there to the heliport and swap the bio. I see. I've already forgotten what our mission is. Regardless, we need to come right. We're at a good altitude now. Ten kilometers to go. That looks like our turning point in the distance. Or maybe that's not Trevaya. <laughs> I'm not sure. to go. We're basically right on course. Getting a little low. It's supposed to be just a little bit higher than that. Otherwise, good. Connection with the head of the TC at the standby frequency. Call sign. Zero five. Okay. Zero five on one three zero. Do I need to contact them? Zero five, gas from Omnia, two nope. two eight four five. Two two eight four five, receiving. This is lab call. We are at the point where he conducted the reservoir blasting. Remember to be trained. Yes, understood. Two two eight four five on the way. Stand by. Roger, waiting for you.
three kilometers to go. Nope. Just uh if I post. see the landing site. Everything is as usual, Commander. The wind indicators and signal flag are within parameters. Alright. So I need to be facing that way, so I'm going to move around. Looks like that flag is where we're landing. Do a little loop around. Slow it down. Not too much. I don't want to lose my ETL just yet. Let that wind push us out just a little. That's a strong wind. Alright, now we can start to slow down again. Emergency fuel. Maybe they have some more. That's what we're on already. Seven percent fuel. Hey, no way. They've got fuel. Okay. Yeah, they have fuel. All right. That's nice. We're going to go a little more than that since they have fuel. I really wasn't expecting them to. We're going to go back up to 30%. Even though we're not going far. I wonder if they could repair me here. And shut the whole thing down and see if they'll repair me. That's okay. We're just going to take the chance that it'll be alright until we get back. Because they probably can't repair me here either, to be honest. Okay, we're uh, we're refueled. We need to set this to zero zero four. Out there. All right, let's uh, let's get going. Reset trim. We'll set it somewhere around here. And then, really, like it requires ugh, a lot more right stick at the moment, but like no collective whatsoever to lift up under these conditions. Well, let's get moving. Pick up some speed. Let's 
start our turn. Altitude's already pretty high. Not a lot of room before we hit the cloud cover here. Should be able to play Chase the Needle on the return trip. Drifting quite a bit. That's all right. Looks like kind of a road down there to the right. Hello. Getting uncomfortably close to the cloud cover. Still has some room, but we're uh, pretty close. Alright, uh, 17. There you go. Drifting a little bit to the left. We gotta come right. But basically, it's just chase the needle, assuming our instruments don't fail. So I wonder, do we get to do part of that as part of the campaign? Or do we just hear about it in the next briefing? I wonder if we'll fly missions that are like, you know, part of the simulator. That would be Inception levels. My simulated game has a story involving flying in a simulator. and I have to actually request it this time. ATC Aprika. Abort takeoff? <laughs> uh, whatever. Contacting them because all I get is abort takeoff. 
request for landing. I can't. Now I can request take off. <laughs> And like, this isn't a Stone Sky issue, this is not a campaign problem, this is just every time they rely on the, the core game, the DCS, Eagle Dynamics, Radio, and ATC, it doesn't work. I kind of wish they would just, you know, skip the in-game ATC entirely and just script it all. It's not doing them any favors. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm on the right frequency, 120. Uh, yeah, 126. I'm on the right frequency. All right. Well, let's uh, let's turn it around. One of those things I love about helicopters compared to fixed wing. You just you can't orbit your landing point and just keep looking at it as you spin circles around it in fixed wing. But in a helicopter? Yeah, no problem. Point it into the wind. I'm surprised we made it all the way back without the engines blowing up. I thought for sure the chip in the main gearbox was going to cause this whole thing to just deteriorate rapidly. Hey! Okay. Alright! Excellent! 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 Woo! Excellent. I'm also surprised we got that because we went and shut down and repaired and triggered the whole the engine is failing thing. Okay, well, uh, let's do our shutdown then, again, for the second time this mission. Shut off all our stuff, anti-icing. I guess I should probably want to keep that one on as long as I can, but uh, not off. Remember to turn this one off this time. Off. Everything on our triangle panels is off. Radar elf is off. Autopilot is already off. There, everything is off there. Anti-icing the right engine still on, apparently. Off. There we go. That's off. Right, I'm making an effort to actually turn everything off and make sure it's off this time before I shut off my generators, one and two. And the rectifiers, one, two, three. Throttle it down. I'm supposed to wait a while, a couple of minutes, which I'm not going to do, I'm just going to kill the fuel.
Anyway, rotor brake should be good by now. Inverters and batteries. And that'll about do it for this mission. I'll see you guys next time.